Hi everyone, <laughs> it's Michelle Howe. I hope you're there, I think you are. I've done this enough to see, to be confident that this is actually working. Um, today is what, Thursday night? Happy Thursday night to everyone. Tomorrow's Friday, we can get on with the weekend and that's a beautiful thing. So I come on here once a month to say hello and um, meet some of you that are members in the group and I post this actually on my page afterwards so um, hello to everybody who gets to watch this um, at this point I seem to do these Facebooks in the group because for some reason I I'm a little gun shy to actually go live on the big Facebook page so this is a little bit easier for me to do I hope that's okay um, and it is okay so um, I know some of you are coming on and it's a little bit hard for me to keep track of what everyone's writing, although I can see some of these comments. So um, hello everyone, hi Victoria. Um, I love coming on here. I have no idea why I like it so much, but I think it's because I'm saying hello to all my fellow empaths out there and I get to share whatever wisdom I can channel through <laughs> to you um, if you have some questions hi Carol and or some thoughts or ideas that you want to share um, certainly put them in the comment section and at the end I will see what they what those are and possibly answer some or whatnot when you're on Facebook live it's basically me conversing with you and you're like a big group of people so um, it's not as much of a two-way thing as it is a one-way thing. Hi, Betsy. Hi, Terry. Um, so that's why I actually put together some a wisdom gathering that's an online meeting once a month. Um, it's really to bring us together and bring up a teaching um, topic, concept, spiritual law or whatnot and get all of us to share on that and come together and, and do like a clearing meditation with it so that's a really nice way to get involved um, I'm hoping that it's going to like be something a staple of what we can do together because what's the saying hi Alice um, the saying is you put one light together you put five or six lights together the lights brighten up even more so we can help one another in that way um, that's one idea the second idea is um, I, I think it's important that people hear from me and um, get their questions somewhat answered like an intro to empath evolution just to share what empath evolution is but also talk about the journey of an empath because um it's funny because i have a, a friend who a lady she's becoming my friend she's definitely an empath but she doesn't know any of these concepts or ideas and she's helping me with, with my website and she's like michelle you need to explain that you know you need to get out there and explain what the journey of it this needs to be organized differently so that people can understand what this even is because there's so many empaths out there they have no idea they're empathic so um, and by the way you know my definition is pretty inclusive I say everyone's empathic but then there are the ones of us that really are absorbing and we're struggling and there's no need for that like if you just have some of the basic tools your life will change immensely and then as you move forward, trust me, for some of us, this journey is on steroids. There's a lot more to it than I ever imagined, nor can I fully explain to you what is happening. Um, I, excuse me, I kind of defer to some people that, um, people who are having experiences but can actually vocalize and verbalize what is actually happening like for me I can do healings I can see patterns I can absolutely tell you with the beginning stages of of, of of tools that you need to keep in touch I keep in mind and utilize but there are some of us that are so 
fully aware of what's happening. So um, that's something that they can speak to that, let them speak to that. And, and actually, as of recently, um, I've always met all kinds of empaths. I mean, I'm telling you from A to Z, the skills and the amount of what we're connecting with is not necessarily exactly the same. So we're all using different tools and we all connect with spirit, feelings, knowings in our own unique way. So, you know, in the month of January, the, the whole theme of it was purpose. What is your purpose? And that word has floated around a lot, a ton in, um, within the spiritual community, within, you know, people that are healers, people that are embracing these things, what is my purpose? Because we know there's something more that we're supposed to do. And sometimes we feel lost and that connection there isn't as clear as it, it is, it needs to be. Um, so how do we rebalance, center? I say, you need to start to learn about energy, energy awareness skills, yes, but how do you, so you're so good at navigating what's around you, there's another layer. Change your energy, strengthen your energy, then expand your energy out. So how do you do that? <laughs> it's a process and you become stronger and stronger and stronger. And with the strength sometimes comes sensitivity because you know more and you're connecting like your chakras up above are connecting even more you don't even know you had chakras but they're there um and then comes the idea are you a medium are you a healer what can you do um to impact in in, in a positive way what's around you so um there's the being an empath you're just starting there's the becoming a skilled empath. You're, you know, expanding on your tool chest. Your toolbox is there. Let me learn this. Let me learn this. Let me learn this. Then there is the wise empath. All right. All along the way, I see the journey as a spiritual journey and as one of interconnection. You're becoming more aware of who you are. Apart, apart from. This is my job, this is my family, I'm the mother, I'm the daughter, I'm the sister, I'm the wife. In, apart from those dynamics, you have another layer of intelligence, I wanna say, another layer of you that is not emotional, that is basically managing a human life without getting caught up in this web, this web, this web. And taking everything personal and not that we don't live because we all live and we all can sense and see what's happening but when you're empathic and you take things to heart it, it hurts like you it's too much for you to take on and tune into all that's around you that's why it's like strengthen your energy field become more of who you are stop getting stop taking things personally and then when you do have wounds we need to go in we need to remove them or you need to remove them because it's your job just like i'm speaking to you today and how much can i help you i can absolutely impact other people it happens but it's not my job to go in there and fix things for them. And it's not my job to absorb things. I will inadvertently be impacted by what's around me. That's why as an empath, I am very aware and very careful. But then again, I also live, I have children, I have places I need to be. So things need to be positioned in a way that I have, I can do this. <laughs> I can do this, right? Um, and we can, and we can. So um, I want to just go into the topic today. I didn't want this to go on really long because I know you guys are busy. Hi, April. Hey, Kelly. 
um, purpose. I think that our purpose is always. Um, see, when you look at everybody, most people don't really look at life. What's your purpose? They're like, what's my purpose? I'm going to work in the morning. I'm going to mow the, mow the lawn. I'm going to make dinner. I've got to get, you know, they're thinking basic things that I need every day. And we all need those things covered because if we don't, we can't survive as far as the physicalness of what we're into. But then beyond that, the purpose to me is what I'm passionate about. What makes, drives this lifetime for me? Okay, what drove it for me was I needed to get married. I wanted to get married. That was in the cards. There was no stopping that. <laughs> I wanted to have children. There was no stopping that. There was a, there were all these moments in time that nothing could have stopped me from having children, even though, even though it was really tough because I was very business oriented. And when you all of a sudden put me into a mother role, I became a different person. <laughs> I became a different person and it was hard to integrate and be okay with that change. So along all of these years, we're going through all the, so we've got to, I've got to mesh all of the roles that I have. Here I am a planner, right? What does that mean? I love to organize and I love to plan and I love to vision create things. That's me. Um, that's my happy place. <laughs> that's when nothing bothers me at all. I've got it all. But now creating that vision and organizing and managing it. Oh, some of those skills are not <clears throat> are not yet fully developed in me. That's why there's going to be some other people that are going to help me with that part because it's it, it it's a skill. All this stuff is a skill. So when we create our life, we come in. Sometimes we have these natural skills. Nobody taught us to do this. We know how to do it. That is past life. That is your genius. You, you're just a natural at certain things. And you just step into it. So, um, yeah. That's a little bit about purpose and passion. And when you're passionate about something, it makes you want to get up in the morning. Now, what happens when we're living our life and you know what? I'm not seeing any passion at all about any part of what's happening to me on a daily basis. As a matter of fact, I feel like somebody is like stressing me out. Life is against me. This is too hard. I don't know what to do. I'm not worth it. I'm not valuable. Nobody loves me. I've got all these things that are ee, popping into the head, popping into the head. Um, I haven't been a good mother. I feel really guilty. Like that stuff, some of it, honestly, it's global consciousness. I have yet to find a mother who doesn't feel guilty about something at some point or another. And when my, um, I never used to feel, I shouldn't say I never, I used to feel a responsibility. And I did. When I became a mother, I was responsible for bringing up these kids. This was my job. And I took that idea to the nth degree, which meant that I couldn't do the rest of my stuff because that was my job. And if I did my other stuff, I'd feel guilty. So there's that guilt thing. But it, I was surprised and shocked when my kids graduated and I was like this, almost like someone was cutting an umbilical cord. <laughs> That had been cut way, way, way 18 years ago. But when they left to go to college, I had this overwhelming guilt that I had somehow not done a great job with them. And at one point I'm like, why, why, why would I think that? I have gone above and beyond um, and I've always been there. Like, because... I was distracted at certain points. I was distracted. Hey, Mary. And, but then I'm like, wait a minute, but this is something more because it was so deep in me that I was guilty. I, you know, I'm like, okay, well, I'm grieving something. Let this kind of flow out and let me try to change my mind on this. Let me feel these emotions and let them flow. 
Um, and that's how a lot of it has hit me. A lot of it. It's just, it's a ride. It's a ride. And I'm sure that similarly, when other pivotal points come in our life, either people pass away, people are sick, we come to new realizations and we become, in my opinion, much more of the person, you know, like a depth. There's a depth to us. We understand life. We're not just taking it for granted. We're not just haphazardly going, we're becoming more intentional, intentional, more heart-centered. Um, that's a well-lived life, right? Um, and then there are the things that upset us, right? Make us angry. How can these injustices be happening? You know, how does this person dare behave this way? Or, you know, so creating our life, we're creating it with other people and other people have all of their stuff to deal with. So um, I guess the only thing I can say is not to try not to take things personally and to look at a person and realize they're all on their journey. There's something that they're learning and they behave like they've been behaved to. So it's really kind of sad but true. If you brought up in a house with a mom or a dad who's angry or who's been abused or who doesn't understand how to love or who in your mind has been lesser than in some way or has hurt you in some way, most likely they've had that happen to them. Do you know what I mean? That it's not personal. It's just them behaving like who they are, which unfortunately isn't the kind of, you know, you didn't sign up for that. You wouldn't have wanted that, but that's what you have. So then you look at it and you say, okay, well, what am I going to do with that? How am I going to not duplicate, not replicate the way she, what she did to me on to my children and so forth and so on? Because all this stuff is generational. So we do the best we can. That's all God, God, universe, whatever you want to call it. Divine source. It's us. This is a body. Then we have a body that's bigger than this. It's us. So, and we're energetic and energy is magnetic and it's electric. And as empaths, we get overwhelmed because too much energy around us, we need to learn to ground it. If there's one thing for sure that I have really never been, I didn't know about this, first of all, for 40 years, but for the last 10 years when things have moved faster for me, grounding, I'm just now getting, it's not, mm, I should say it's not that easy, it has never been like, Michelle, go do that grounding. I've never felt it was necessary because I always thought I was fine, but I always was slightly ungrounded. So if you can ground, it will help you immensely. If you can learn to clear, then there are, like, there are advanced, more advanced ways of doing this. That will help you as well. So, um, I don't know. I said a lot of things. I just kind of let it all come out. Um, does anybody have, I guess I'm going to just take a pause and open my, open up the computer and see if there are any questions, if there's anything specific that you guys are running into. Um, I'd be more than happy to share a little bit. Let me, let me just see. I, I shut this because, um, I didn't want the the monitor to come through and <clears throat> create more light, <laughs> more light. Um, and I wear glasses. Here we go. Hi, Brenda. <laughs> no questions yet that I can see on here. But there's 20 questions, so it's it's a little bit hard to answer them. Um, let me see what else comes to mind. What I think is important 
so me I like to plan I've, I've always had all these plans right I've always been a writer write the plan down write the plan down Michelle right if you have that creative side to you nourish it because and and take <laughs> one of the things I've had to learn step by step by step um, I can see it all <laughs> You want me to take the steps, okay? But I can see it. The steps slow us down, and the steps, the steps, the steps could be tedious and slow. And some of us are better at that than others of us. So um, find what you're good at, and learn the things that are that you're not good at. It's good sometimes. It's good to know what you're not good at. So you can find someone to support you in that way. Um, and just take the steps, the next potential for you. We're all so different. It's not like, you know, we all want to do everything. Yeah, that would be me some days. Ah, I just want to do everything, but I can't. I need to focus in on what it is that I'm going to do. The first step, the second step. We all start somewhere and we move forward. Um... I'm glad to be here with you guys. I wish this was a two-way thing, but evidently not so much. Hi, Corey. Hey, Crystal. Um, if you guys have any questions or whatnot, you can put them in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer them later. Um, as far as my page or this group, if you guys want to talk to me or another seasoned empath about this journey and the services that we provide, there's discovery session a discovery session is is up for you it's for you to have a conversation with me or another one of the girls that are here with me and determine what your next step is i mean there's a lot written out there and that, there's a lot of really good stuff out there but the journey doesn't end it continues and if you want it to we are there for you so, um, hi Betsy. Hi Betsy. <laughs> Betsy says there are many ways to ground. How do you, do you have a go-to? Um, actually I do have a go-to. <laughs> um, I love to open my screen door and look out at the trees. And right now it's snowing outside, so it's very, very cold. And when I open that screen door, just feeling nature that's right there in front of me. Mind you, I don't go out on the deck because it's freezing out. And then I just like make believe that I'm the tree. I am with that tree. The tree's in the distance, but I, I am with that tree. And I can slowly feel everything kind of moving down. That, and moving down. And just kind of calming down. That is where I how I mainly do it. Of course, there are some other ways, you know, certainly there are meditations that bring you there. But <clears throat> for me, there's nothing like just letting it come in. Think of our porous body, let it come in and let it move things out. And just you become really good at thinking of yourself, like almost breathing from your feet, moving energy, going down, bringing energy up, up down like you want to become a pillar and you want to in the process of doing that change your energy by you know your focus your intention you can change it and you'll feel the energy moving um, it takes a little bit to learn to feel your energy body to feel energy that's a given but when you can slow down your mind to do that you become that tree. You become really grounded. And then, of course, if your chakras are up high and you love being up there because it's so fun up there, then you become ungrounded again. So think of yourself as a big energy and I'm part of the earth. I am in the earth. I mean, at some points, I've played around a lot with how to handle this body. I've brought earth into me like this is stuff we can do it's a little bit um, 
is it called mystical is that the word it's a little bit outside the box but if we can feel other people just by watching them that's just energy we can tune into the energy of water we can tune into the energy of earth I can tune into the energy of a tree I can change the way that I feel bringing that energy to me <laughs> sounds a little bit out there right I know I know but you can and the more you practice it the more you'll see and you'll believe and you'll you'll it's like you are you know because the nervous system ours especially gets overstimulated by too much stuff and if you are not constantly conscientious how am I feeling daily conscientious let me clear let me get myself back into a space that feels good to me um, you could easily be dumped garbage trucks dumped on you and how are you gonna clean that off it's not gonna be so easy to clean that off so um, anyway anybody else <laughs> hi Louise <laughs> um, and um, if any of you are really good with social media would you please let me know if you have a couple hours a week or so to like devote to helping me just putting it out there um the energy of water and trees yes it is being an empath i'll tell you um it's it's not just nature you can bring anything into you and instead of being exposed to and and at the mer you know being negatively impacted by something i'm on purpose going to put the stuff that helps strengthen who i am period and i talked to an empath today um how do you strengthen your energy body how do you become it's it's actually you develop that ability you work with people that help you develop it you get some energy healing with it you start to learn spiritual laws you just become a different person because your lens becomes differently you look at the world differently you process people and their stuff differently you step back when you need to step back you step forward when you when when that works for you as well so don't be discouraged if you struggle at points it's part of the lesson and the learning and the journey and then you need to take action to get some help if you want help read a book I mean I've read every book in the world they help to a certain degree and then eh. <laughs> was I paying attention when I read that book um, I have to say some of them know and as I've gotten further along I'm like Oh my god I wish I had read this book now because I would have paid so much more attention because I understand it more so each what you can grab or what you can learn or take from a book you can take the vibration of the writer from a book so be aware <laughs> you can the knowledge that you can grab from that book really ba is based on can I connect the dots of what this person is telling me to do or is this book need to be shelved for a while it's not resonating or I only got 20% out of that book because at the time I didn't know or I couldn't relate to or I didn't see the importance of do you know what I mean so as this journey goes on we mature so anyway hi Helena um, how do I handle a trip to the mall <laughs> Or some other public venues um, honestly when I go to the mall I just prepare myself to be at the mall I know there's a lot of people there and I just I don't I bring things within me I bring my energy in and I fortify I'm like nope I don't I don't try to feel all these things around me I am in my energy that's it and you know you can call it a shield I don't really call it a shield because 
I like being in this energy. It's me, and you're not allowed. It, you know, you, it, it, not that it's not allowed in. It's not impacting me negatively, because I'm, I am a pillar, and everything is moving up and down. So it's not. I'm not overwhelmed by it, and I do believe that that is the strength of someone's energy, more than. Let me put a let me put something around me to stop this. It's a nice symbolism and it does work. But as you mature along and as you step into it more and you get help on this, your energy will strengthen and you will learn. It's almost like you, you turn a switch, turn a whole knob down. I am not allowing what this is. Whatever this is, I'm going to look for the good of what this is. So some of this we're noticing the things that aren't so good and we just need to be so what we notice is where our energy goes for grounded and we keep grounding and we are strong in what we are we got it now i'm not saying i spend hours at the mall or i spend you know i know when i go i'm prepared for it and i afterwards will clear whatever might have somehow gotten through in some way to impact me but it's not that big of a deal to me, at least at this point. Um, if some place doesn't feel right to me, I will leave. I will leave. Just all the things that I've done and I still, my God, this is horrible energy in here. I'm not hanging in here. You leave. So that should help you guys. Hi. Hello, everyone. Anyways, I am going to uh, bring this to a close and um, wish you guys a great February that's coming our way. Um, if things keep up at the pace of which they have been in January, um, a lot is going to be happening in February. Um, energetically, besides the cold weather, right? Energetically. So just uh, my advice to you is to learn continue 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 to learn and continue to expand your heart and clear emotions strengthen just stay with it don't let it like oh life got too busy i forgot to do it and next thing you know you are in a depression do you know what i mean you don't want that um your quality of life your feeling, how you feel on a daily basis, does not need to go sinking down low. We need to raise, you want to raise yourself. That's what you're going to do. So, anyway, goodbye, everybody. Until next month. It's the last Thursday of the month I'll do one of these live. And um, stay, stay warm. Take care.